How are you? Good. Glad to be here. Good. That makes two of us. That makes three of us. Today is the first Shabbat of the month, so we'll do a Torah processional. That should be fun, right? Yeah. Everybody always seems to enjoy that. Oh, look who's here. To your left of you, Judy? Lillian? Lillian? I'm referring to Lillian. You're here every week. I haven't seen Lillian for a long time. How is she doing? Yeah, I know, I heard. She's here, though. So she's doing better than a lot of people, right? Right, right. <laughs> perspective is everything, Amen. isn't it? Yes. Some people's perspectives are really skewed. What can you do? Our, uh, our job is to get God's perspective, right? Yes. Too many people operating in their own desires and their own wills and their own wants and what they think is important. We're going to learn today that sometimes it takes a person a long time to surrender to God. Most people are not. Not even close. But the more you get rid of you, guess what? The more you get of him. Hallelujah. It all depends on how bad you want him. All right. Um, let's read a psalm. This one, um, it appears that the sweet singer of Israel, a.k.a. King David, seems a little arrogant. Watch. It says, Hear a just cause, Adonai. Heed my cry. Listen to my prayer from honest lips. Let my vindication come from you. Let your eyes see what is right. So, it looks like he's claiming to be, you know, pristine and pure, but actually, it's not arrogant. He's not claiming guiltlessness in all areas of his life, just in this present situation. He's running a, a song about a situation, and apparently he's been falsely accused. You probed my heart. You visited me at night. You essayed me without finding evil thoughts that should not pass my lips. As for what others do, by words from your lips, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. My steps hold steady to your paths. My feet do not slip. In other words, he's saying this opposition is ever opposing him. Who knows? They have no right for harassing him the way they are. I'm sure one of you can relate. Sometimes, though, it's the arrogant that say, oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny how insidious pride is. It's the most insidious thing, and it's the father of all sins. Every single solitary sin is born from pride. It's almost prideful to think you're humble. That's how insidious it is. And it's those who think that they can't be hoodwinked that are the most susceptible. And it's usually the mature believers because they get comfortable. They think they know it all. Sad. Listen to what I'm saying. Some of you need to hear it. Bad. Now I call on you, God, for you will answer me. So confident about his relationship with the Lord. So confident about his intimacy with God. That's beautiful. If you're going to boast, remember what Jeremiah said, ninth chapter, 24th verse? He said, you who are strong, don't boast in your strength. Strength is fleeting. I used to be strong. Incredibly strong, actually. You who are rich, don't boast in your wealth. I visited Argentina once when they were the seventh leading economy in the world. I visited them after their market crashed and I saw millionaires living in the gutter. 
it's gonna happen here at some point. Just giving you a heads up. All that money you're saving is gonna be lost when it could be used. He said, don't boast in your wealth. But he said, if you're going to boast, remember what he said, Jeremiah? If you're going to boast, boast that you know the Lord. So he's boasting, but not about himself. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Show how wonderful is your grace. Show how wonderful is your grace, your favor, your loveliness, your unmerited mercy, your kindness, your goodness. Savior of those who seek at your right hand, refuge from their foes. He's committing his cause to the Lord. He's not slinging mud. He's not defending himself. He's saying, you are my defense. He's standing firm in the goodness and the righteousness and the justice of God. He says, protect me like the pupil of your eye. You know, you know that. He's shown the pupil gives you vision. It brings in light. Israel's God's pupil. You, you, you come after Israel, you're poking God in the eye. And you know what? You could be the most well-intentioned lover of Jesus there is and still insidiously be hoodwinked. Isn't that crazy? Protect me like the pupil of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are assailing me. He's not going after them. He's going to hide in God. It's beautiful. From the deadly enemies who are all around me. They close their hearts to compassion. Guys, I mean, that's a litmus test for where you are with God and how mature you are. If you are lacking compassion, if you can turn a blind eye, if you could see somebody in trouble and just go, ah, everybody's got problems. You got problems. They speak arrogantly with their mouths. They track me down. They surround me. They watch for a chance to bring me to the ground. They're like lions. You've ever seen lions in the wild? They're different than the ones you see at the Atlanta Zoo. I've seen them in the wild, man. They're scary. They just pounce. And they come out of nowhere. And they dig their claws. I saw one dig their claws into an antelope's back. And the antelope's trying to get away. And no way he can get away. They are like lions eager to tear their prey. Like young lions crouching in ambush. The enemy, he, he just, he doesn't even bum rush you. He ambushes you. It's one thing if it was a blitzkrieg, you could almost see it coming. But it's not. Who attacked Israel when they were leaving Egypt? Amalek. Amalek. And where did they attack? Boom. Yeah. So David's saying, hide me, protect me. They have hemmed me in, and they are ready to deliver the final blow. They're going to take him out. And then verses 13 and 14, it's just beautiful. Simply come to my defense, Lord. He says, arise, Adonai, confront them. He'll fight for you. You can't fight for you. All these nuts that are trying to fight the devil, good luck. Hide in God, don't fight the devil, it's not your fight. If you beat the devil, who gets the glory? You do. Let God fight your battles, kid. That's the trick. He wants to fight for you. What did God tell Moses? Tell the people to be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Moses didn't part the waters. God did. You ain't parting the waters. God will. Yeshua himself couldn't perform many miracles in Nazareth. Why? The people didn't need it. So if you're doing great, Good on you. It's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. Read the Bible. You'll see what I'm telling you is true. It's not the way it works. God wants to be your God. He wants to be your deliverer. I know you're a big tough guy and you make big decisions in your big boy job, but that's not the way it works in God's kingdom. 
Arise, Adonai, confront them, bring them down. With your sword, deliver me from the wicked. With your hand, Adonai, from human beings, from people whose portion is life in this world. How much portion is your life in this world? That's a biggie, man. You fill their stomachs with your treasure. Their children will be satisfied too and will leave their wealth to their little ones. Today, people are leaving millions of dollars, living like a pauper, like a poor schnook, and leaving their kids millions of dollars. Let me ask you something. You who are leaving your kids so much money, what did your dad leave you? And how did you do? These kids out there, they don't even work. They have trust funds. That's a recipe for demise. I'm leaving my kids a trust fund. I trust that you'll get a job. <laughs> now go fund yourself. Go fund me. <laughs> go fund me is another way of saying, I don't want to work. Come on, guys. And the last verse is a beautiful verse. It's just magnificent. This is the crescendo of the end of this song. When all's said and done... You know, help me, Lord, hem me in. I commit my cause to you. Hide me. Come to my defense. And here it is. But my prayer, it's a prayer. My prayer in righteousness is to see your face. You hear what D David's saying? He's saying they can have it all. They can have all they want. They can have whatever. I could care less. It's more than enough to see your face. That's what he's saying. But my prayer in righteousness is to see your face on waking. May I be satisfied with a vision of you. Wouldn't that be beautiful if you went to sleep with the desire that as soon as you wake up, you get a vision of the Lord's face? It's pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty good. I know we push hard here, right? I know. It's a hard push. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, you got to figure out what the Lord's telling you. That's not my job. Religion puts God in, in a box and they put people in a bubble. My job is to put a pin in your bubble and unbox God. Your job is to get with God and figure out what he desires of you. Of you. Of you. You follow? That's between you and the Lord. It really is. It's, very, it's a very personal matter because he deals with each one of us very individually. It's a beautiful thing. But then there's overall principles. You know, I want to be like that guy on TV. You ever see Seventh Heaven, that show that was on years ago? I want to be that guy past the day where God is cool and God is fun and God is a part of his life. And, but I don't know. I'm... I'm just mentally disturbed you know I say that all the time I had a, a there's a psychiatrist that watches from Miami and he wrote in and he said you're not mentally disturbed he goes I deal with mentally disturbed people all the time but I'm saying I'm, I'm like obsessive and compulsive and mental and it's not normal I know that it's my personality it's not normal so be careful I've never asked you to be like me and I don't necessarily want to be like you I want to be like Yeshua and if you want to be like Yeshua, let me tell you something. You check out the, some of the things he said. He pushed hard. Dude, I don't know what you're reading, but what I read, and there's not a lot, you know. Like I told you, I used to be in plenty of cults. The Bhagavad Gita, the E changed. Volumes, volumes, and volumes, even the Talmud. 7,200 pages, and that's just interpretive. We have like, like 800 sentences from Yeshua. What? How easy is it to follow 800 sentences? Yeshua, your mother and father are outside. Clearly, he honored his mother and father. And your brother's outside, and he says, who's my mother and who's my brother but those that do the will of my father? I didn't come to bring peace but a sword to have mother against daughter. If, if you don't proclaim me, you're not worthy of me. Those are, that's, guys, 
I don't know which Yeshua you're following or listening to, but those are, whoo, what? If you don't deny yourself out of the box. That's Matthew 16. Nothing even started. There's no acts. There's no revelation. There's no nothing. Right? If you want to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and then you could. That's heavy duty, right? So is it really, is it really heavy duty or we've been sold such a lukewarm message that we've been lulled to sleep? Satan's lullaby. Watchman Nee wrote a book, The Nominal Christian. He was considered phenomenal. You know what he said? The reason why you think I'm phenomenal is because everybody else is so lukewarm. I look phenomenal, but I am nominal. What do you mean? To give your life to the Lord, that's nominal? Yes. To surrender your life to the Lord, that's nominal? Yes. To think about God constantly, is that, is that nominal? Tell me. According to the scripture. Not according to me or you. What does it say? Nominal. Believe it or not, believe it or not, today you're going to be incredibly encouraged. What do you think of that? Not, not that any of you need it, because I could tell by the look on your faces, everything's going just hunky dory. Jim Dandy. Everything for God is going just fine. And because we're His, He knows what He's doing. This morning I was laying in bed with Burn and I said, Remember that time we went through that awful time here? It was just awful. And I thought it was done. And I thought it was over, and I couldn't imagine. I would cry out to God all day. Lord, I don't understand. I, 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 I'm not guiltless, but I, I, I don't think I've ever purposely hurt you. I've preached your gospel all over the world. Why is this happening? And Bern and I were reminiscing this morning, and you know what God was doing? He was removing obstacles to explode his ministry through this place. But we didn't see it at the time. We just saw this, this horrific situation because you're in it, you know? You can't see past it. You're in this dark tunnel. You can't see past it. You can't see any light. There's no light in the tunnel. And we thought for sure it's over. It's done. It looks so done. It was the most done thing I've ever experienced in my life. And man, look what he did. Look at what he did. Congregations in India, congregations in Ethiopia. Our two congregations that we saw in Ethiopia, they're already thriving. They've already identified Beta Israel, Jewish people that they're evangelizing to. And already souls are being won to the Lord. In, in a couple of weeks, I'll show, you, I'll show you pictures in a week or two. Already had a conference with 100 people in Addis Ababa. And... and because these people, if, because I'm more nuttier than they are. I'm like, let's do it now, right now. We didn't see what God was doing. We didn't see. We really didn't. We thought it was going to be over. Instead, it was just the beginning. He was removing things to explode. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. So what's the take-home message? You could trust the Lord. If he's permitting something or promoting something, you can trust the Lord. You will not know. You might not know right away. But you could say, I trust you. I don't understand. But obviously, you don't need me to understand. But I trust you. You're doing something. And you're good, so everything you do is good. So I'm just going to park my, my faith in trusting you. Period. You can't go wrong with that. Do you understand? Let me ask you something, is there anybody here that would be willing to raise their hand that would like to tell me why God can't be trusted? Then let's pray. Father, there is coming to a point where there is nothing I can say. Like I said to Bernadette that this morning, I can't pray anymore. I don't know what to say.
goes, I, I, I don't know how to explain how good you are. But I have a feeling that most of the people in this sanctuary know how good you are. So we're here together to praise you and to worship you for your great goodness. All our hope is in you. All our faith is in you. And our love is for you. We can't thank you enough for being the great God that you are to your children. We bless you. We thank you for Shabbat. We know that the Jews didn't keep Shabbat, but Shabbat kept the Jews. And we thank you for the ultimate Shabbat in our Saw Shalom. Yeshua, the King of Israel, the Prince of Peace. We love you and we bless you. It's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, guys.